Ladies and gentlemen, for distinguished achievement in documentary filmmaking, the Arts and Science Council is proud to present a 2008 ASC honor to Steve Crump. Please welcome Charles Jones. Thank you. In the civil rights movement in the 60s, it wasn't uncommon for a body bloated to come up on the shore of a river. So when we went down into the small towns like Selma, Alabama, for example, where Sheriff Jim Crock ran into us with horses and beat us just trying to get black folks registered to vote, we went into these small towns and uh, had to split up because if something happened to one of us, somebody had to tell the story. We had to tell the story. It was critical that we tell the story. Not long ago, uh, 200 of us graduates of Johnson C. Smith University gathered here in Charlotte. We had been active in leading the sit-ins in 1960. Of course, there were a lot of stories you know to be told. We were joined by another storyteller, though, Steve Crump, a 20-year documentarian who had spent his career telling stories about the African-American experience. Lessons from the lunch counter was just one of a long list, including 9, 4, 57, Dorothy Counts, who integrated Harding High School, black students integrating here, and the nickels from heaven about the triple nickel infantry battalion, Second World War, and strength from Selma, Alabama, Expiration of that bloody Sunday when Alabama's Sheriff Jim Clark tried as he might to write the end of the story. <laughs> that was written by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., however, and 200 marchers escorted by federal marshals who walked to Alabama State Capitol in Montgomery and demanded the right to register and vote. Steve called me one night after an interview in Jim Clark who was then relegated to a nursing home, still claiming, however, that he had done nothing wrong. <laughs> Steve was driving down those dark back roads that we used to travel back in the rural south, those roads where anything could happen, and nobody would know until much later and it was too late. He felt the raw, visceral fear that we felt back in the day that's when I knew Steve just wasn't telling our story. He was living it, he was feeling it, and he was scared. <laughs> so he has honored us with his stories, our stories, and tonight we honor Steve Crump. <laughs> The documentaries that he's done, um, he didn't get a grant to do those. Uh, he didn't have a job to do those. He just did them on his credit card. Well, he makes time to chronicle the history of a people. And it's very important because often it's forgotten history. You know, he's a true example of it's not work to him. It's love. He loves this stuff. Ground right now, Shannon. The latest is police still investigating. We want to show you what's happening here. He was born in Louisville, Kentucky, and would return there later in life to tell the story of another one of the city's famous sons. This is the city. This is the community. This is the place that planted the early seeds of greatness and a life regarded as the greatest. He's gone around claiming to be the real heavyweight champ. But after I'm finished, he'll just be a friend. Sure, we all know who Muhammad Ali is, but did we know him as a youngster in Louisville, Kentucky? We sure didn't. We do now because of Steve's work, and that's what I like so much about his stuff. For somebody who's so public, Steve doesn't talk much. Um, you get a call from Steve, and he says, Tom, why don't we do so-and-so? And I've learned to go, yes, Steve, that'd be a great idea. I met Steve several years ago first when uh, doing some work with the school system. 
I was serving on a number of committees when we were looking at issues concerning ways in which we can improve our school system. And so I met Steve initially in those early days. Those early days for Steve included stints in broadcasting in Orlando, Savannah, and Detroit. But when he landed in Charlotte, his home became WBTV News. Because he's out there every day as a newsman. People know him and they find him. And when they have a little bit of a story, they say, Steve, you need to follow up on this. And he puts those pieces together, which is what a journalist does. Um, but he has this, this short-term thing the journalists are good at, but he's also gifted with this long-term willingness to spend months, years, to make a project happen. And it would be those projects, over 20 documentaries covering a variety of subjects, that would truly put him on the cultural map. You've seen the documentaries, you've seen the care he puts into them, the research. It's a wonderful accomplishment. Steve brings to light the big picture items such as Tuskegee Airmen and, well, lunch counter sit-ins and, and bus riders. But he brings it to a different level where he brings us some of the characters that were involved at crucial points in history but we may never have otherwise heard of. People like Dorothy Counts, people like Sarah Mae Fleming. And I just love that about Steve's work. The one that I really enjoyed working with him on was the Margaret Garner play when that came to town and Steve did a documentary on Margaret Garner. This is an American story regarding the foundation of race and class during its earliest days in our country. In fact, he came here to our church and filmed our kids performing a play around that with uh, arts and science. I'm sitting at the lunch counter at the Bean Museum of the New South and uh, Steve helped us put together a reunion of people who are part of the sit-in movement back in the 60s, not in Greensboro, but in Charlotte, Rock Hill. And that sit-in reunion became a documentary called Lessons from the Lunch Counter. It was named one of the best of the year by the National Association of Black Journalists. Uh, it was so wonderful to have him here collecting those stories and it is such a treat that, that they live on. Oh man, he's a music freak. I mean, the guy like knows uh, liner notes from records from the 70s. I mean, he loves to go to concerts. Steve is one of the few people who, after a Stevie Wonder concert, as we're walking down Tryon Street, will agree to sing Harmony on I Was Made to Love Her and he won't laugh. Steve's real busy. It's real hard to get his attention. And I finally have found the way. Shungli Palace. He loves Chinese food. I often run into him after church, and the conversation can range from current events to our mutual obsession with the Rockford Files. One thing about Steve is he always keeps his cool, whether he's in the middle of a hurricane reporting on it or talking to clan members, or in the presence of dignitaries like Desmond Tutu. He's always Steve, and he's always cool. And Steve's work has been recognized by the Smithsonian, and certainly by the Library of Congress as well. And now that it's been documented, it'll be here for a long time for others to enjoy. I think people will, will look at these documentaries and really feel they have a sense and a real feeling of the people and the places and the events that make Charlotte the kind of city it is. I'm Steve Crump. Thanks so much for joining us. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more time, one more time. It is my honor and privilege to present my friend, a Steve Croft.